Hello there, how you doing? Scott again, bringing you another powerful video about the Lord and how to stay close to God, how to stay on fire for God. The more you spend time in the Word, the closer you get to God, the closer you get to God, the more you see the truth. And the knowledge of the truth will set you free. Alright, let's get into the Word. This is um, for March 13th. And the scripture that we're reading here is Judges 16, 4 through 20. Yes, 4 through 20. Okay. Sometime later, about Sam, we're talking about Samson here. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Shur, whose name was Delilah. The, ru the rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be t tied up and subdued. Hello. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me up with seven fresh thongs that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh thongs that had not been dried, and she tied them with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the thongs as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame, so the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You have lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, If anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him, up, tied him with them. Then, when men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off with his arms as if they were like threads. Dot, Delilah then said to Samson, Until now you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with the, the pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his hair, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with the pin. Again she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was tired to death. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite set apart to God since birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent the word to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands, having put him to sleep on her lap, she called a man to shave off the seven braids of his hair, and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free, but he did not know the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles. They set him to grinding in the prison. Okay, so what do we have here? We see, we know from previous lessons that Samson was warned by his parents to stay away from the Philistine women. And to stay away from the Philistine spirit because they're the enemy. Hello? You don't mess with the enemy. You don't become friends with the enemy. You don't intermarry with them. <laughs> like he did the first time, and he got burned by it. His previous wife deceived him. Okay, and then... Um, <clears throat> But he would not listen, would not listen to his parents. And then he, he met Delilah, who was also along with the, working with the Philistines. And obviously, trouble. <laughs> you, you don't want to mess with anybody who is uh, partners with the enemy, friends with the enemy. They're bad news. <laughs> okay, these women were with the enemy tribe who were terrorizing the Israelites, stealing their food harassing them, wanting to destroy them. Couldn't stand the Israelites. Okay, Delilah told him and showed him each time that her what her plans were to subdue him. 
every time. What will it take to subdue you? Well, bind me with green rope. Okay, great. Now, once I did it, once once she bound him up, Samson, quick, the enemy's upon you. The Philistines are upon you. He gets up and breaks the rope. Well, doesn't he figure this out? She's trying to overtake me. She's trying to defeat me. But here's a problem. Here's a problem. Samson was blinded by her beauty. I personally believe in my heart he was lust, lusting after her beauty. So I really believe it happened. I want to tell you something. It's something I learned a long time ago. There's three things that the enemy, Satan, will try to use to destroy godly men cause them to fall. Those three things are sex, money, and power. If the enemy knows that a, a Christian man, a godly man, will lust after a woman and not control himself and will allow himself to be tempted to lust after a woman, if the enemy knows that he's willing to give in to that temptation, he can cause him to sin and fall. Sure, it's the man's choice to sin, but if the enemy knows that he's willing to to give in to the temptation, all he has to do is just keep showing it to him. Pretty soon he'll give in to it. Same thing with money. Nothing's wrong with money. Um, Jesus said for... Um, you know, some people get it all mixed up thinking that uh, money is the root of all evil. No, the Bible says the love of money is the root of, root of all evil. What that means is, if you put money before God, it's evil. God, is, God should be first and foremost. Money is good. Money is great. You can use money. Money is a tool. Nothing's wrong with money. But money is only a tool. It's not God. God is God. And also with power. The enemy knows that if a man hungers for power to be on top, to be in charge. And he hungers so much to have power that he puts power over God, and he wants power more than God, the enemy can use the power strategy to cause him to fall. Man, if you do this, I'll give you all the power. That's what that's what Satan told Jesus. When he took him off into the wilderness, he told Jesus, well, look here. I can give you, if you look out over all the land and over all the hillside and all the country, I can give you power over all that. Well, that didn't, that didn't affect Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was here. Jesus was with God before the earth ever was created. He knows all about power. He knows who he was. That didn't mean nothing to them. He, Jesus wanted to do what God wanted him to do, and that was to be willing to sacrifice himself for the sins of the people. Jesus was after God's own heart. Jesus was God in the flesh. Okay. So the thing is, but when we stay close to God, we can sense Him nudging us to go here, don't go there, do this, do that. To protect us from the black hole. To protect us from going to a place that get, will get us burned and will hurt us. God wants to give us His power. But when you stray from Him, you will fall into the black hole. And when you stray from God, you, you start to get your eyes off the, the righteous things of God and on the worldliness. When I say worldliness, things that cause you to take your interest off of God and where God doesn't, isn't important anymore. There's things in the world that are nice. There's things in the world that we can enjoy. But they always take a second place to God. And they always should. Otherwise, you'll fall into the black hole. Okay. God wants you to stay close to Him, and He wants to protect you. Why? Because He loves you. So remember this. Always put God first. Always know that God loves you, God cares about you, but if you fall, if you if you sin, if you do something you shouldn't do, just say, Lord, Father God, forgive me. Forgive me my sin, Lord. Forgive me my sin. I want to do right. I want to live right. I want to follow after you, God. In Jesus' name, help me, Lord. Forgive me of the sin and help me stand strong. In Jesus' name. And He will. All right, God let you go. See you later.